can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Okay, Father, we thank you again for yet another opportunity and privilege to be in your presence. We come by the precious blood. We come to hear you again speak to us the word of this life, the word that is able to build us up and grant us our inheritance among them that are sanctified. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. Holy Spirit of our Father, we want to especially acknowledge you, especially and more importantly in this meeting, in this gathering, knowing that there is absolutely nothing that we can do without you. We acknowledge your presence as we surrender and ask you to help us, speak to us, grant us understanding, and also the grace to be able to do so that we no longer be just the hearer but also the doer of your word so that our lives will be blessed thank you father in jesus precious name we pray amen and amen today we're going to be rounding off the last part of the model one how we read the bible how we pray because we're talking about we're going to be discussing about praying, how to study the word of God and pray because they are two sides of the same coin. How we read the Bible, how we read the Bible. In those days, when I, what is my normal practice? When I finish, when I want to pray, I bring the Bible that I have read, I put it on the ground, I will stand on it. Say, Lord, I'm standing on your word. I am praying it. That's what I used to do in those days. That's, it's not that, don't be saying when you go now and say you are standing on the pastor because I'm sorry, so the world will be entering me. God, I know that's what some people will do. No, I did it for my own sake. I know it's personal. Say it's personal. Uh -huh. Oh, tomorrow you go and be wearing barefoot and say because Moses, well, God, he didn't tell you, you are not Moses. What he did to Moses was personal to Moses. Is it just this kind of a thing now? You see somebody, when they want to read the Bible, they will throw it open and then they stand on it and they will be praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Spread the Bible, we stand on it and be praying and they pray. When you finish, it doesn't, nothing, nothing will happen. Not one single thing will happen. I did it for my own personal conviction, you know, to go extra long, you see what I'm doing now, is me. So that's how. So how do you study the Bible? Because if you don't, the, how effective your prayer will be is grossly dependent on the level of the knowledge of God that you have. If you have deficit, if you are deficient of God's word, your prayer life will be very weak. You won't have faith. You'll be praying off point, OP. That's what a lot of us do. When we talk about prayer, there are two major broad aspects of prayer. We find one in the book of John chapter 14. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, we find the other broad in the book of John chapter 16, verses 19 to 28. The first one is John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. The first one is John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. Look at what he says in this case. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. What works did he do? 
What kind of works? What are they specifically? He is healed. He delivers. He cast out devil. He raised the dead. And all of that. Okay? That's the works that he did. Verse 13, he said, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, If you shall ask anything in my name, who will do it? Who will do it? Who will do it? I'm not hearing you, so I'm not sure. Who will do it? Jesus. Jesus will do it. So who are you asking? It's God. (laughs) If you should ask anything in whose name? God's name. Whose name? If you are not sure, can I see your hand up? This is where we have problems. The prayer that you're supposed to be praying to Jesus and his name, you will carry it and go to the Father and be praying it. You are not getting results. You can stay there praying that prayer forever. You are not going to get results. Hold this. Go to John chapter 16, 19. We read all the the way down to 28. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do you inquire among yourself of that I said? A little while you shall not see me, and again a little while you shall see me. You are asking in your heart about what I said. So this is what he repeated. Verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. 21. A woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow because her hour is come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Verse 22, and you know therefore, and you now therefore have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh away. Are we understanding it? Are we following? Okay, verse 23, and in that day, which day? You remember he said, I'm going to go. Now you have sorrow and all of that. A time will come when this your sorrow shall be turned into joy. When will that happen? Because why you are sorrowful and all. He said, you're going to have sorrow when I'm no longer there. When I would have taken away from your midst, when I would have died, go to cross and all of that. You will grieve and cry and have a lot of sorrow. But that your sorrow will be turned into joy when, how? When I am back to life. Okay? When I'm resurrected. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Remember the first one he said, whatever you ask me. The first one he said, what you, whatever you ask me. Can you go back to it? John chapter 14 verse what? 14. And then you come back to John 16, 24. John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Go to 13. And if I go, I prepare a place. And whatever you shall ask in my name, that I will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask, who are you going to ask? Jesus. Whatever you ask me, I will do it. And he started by telling you the works that I do. It's those works. Okay, now go to John chapter 16, 24. Go back to John 16, 24. He said, He that you have uh, asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Yes. These things have I spoken unto you in the proverb, but the time coming when I shall no more speak unto you in proverb, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day you shall ask in my name, I say unto you that I will, I say not 
unto you that I will pray the Father for you. But now you are going to be praying to the Father on your own. You pray to the Father. Now see the two broad prayers. One is a prayer that addresses situations and circumstances under the sun. That is why you say, whosoever shall say to this mountain, if it were in the Old Testament, when the Bible says, call upon God and he will deliver you and all of that. And some people are praying prayer like the Old Testament. So when there is issue and all of that, they start praying to God to come and deal with what God said they should deal with. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, and you are telling God to do something about that mountain, he's not going to do it. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. And you didn't say to the mountain, you are not addressing that, then you go to God. You remember the story that my wife has told several times about how they were traveling and armed robbers were pursuing them and they are praying, oh God, deliver us. Oh God, deliver us. Oh God, save us. Protect us, oh God. And while they were saying that, the armed robbers were closing in on them. And she said, the Holy Spirit my dear dad, he said the word of this life, life and death, to your tongue. Address the situation. Stop the stop. You know what God asked Moses? He said, Moses, because when they come, when they came to the Red Sea, they looked behind, they saw the armies of Pharaoh coming after them. Their heart failed. They didn't have any weapon, nothing. They were, Moses was just leading because God said, do so. And he was leading them to the promised land. And lo and behold, the Red Sea was before them. And they thought, no other direction, no other place to run to because sea covered everywhere. To turn back is to just enter the mouth of these gorillas. Then to face and easy for them to enter inside the ocean and be drowned. They were in a fix. And while they were wailing and crying and all of that, Moses himself was confused and God spoke to him and said, what do, he was praying. He was praying to God to deliver them. And Moses, God asked him, what do you have in your hand? He said, Rod. Stop disturbing my peace. Take the rod you have. I give you a rod. What is a rod today? The word of God in your mouth. Use it. Address the situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Because the works that I do, you will do. Whatsoever you pray, you ask in my name. In the name of Jesus, I command healing in your body. It is as simple as it sounds. You don't need to go to Harvard or acquire special degree before you can do that. Illiterate people who did not go to school, they do it, they get the result. That was what an illiterate called Peter. That was what he did. And when they were now asking him, when everybody now gathered and were looking and said, ah, he now turned to them, he said, why are you people looking at us as if to say we are spirits that we just fell from the mass? Or you think it is our holiness that have made this man whole? He said, no. Simple. Faith. In the name of Jesus. Because he told him, he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Whatsoever you ask. Whatsoever you bind on earth. Is what is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is losing heaven. So what you are supposed to be dressing and addressing, you are calling on God. Is a prayer of unbelief. He does not get an answer. 
circumstances of life and all of that. Let me tell you, there is only one reason you will address the situation and it will not happen. If you do it by faith, there is only one situation, only one condition. You know what it is? <clears throat> if it is the one that God allows, if it is the one that God allows, the Bible says, count it joy, brethren, when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith is your faith that is being, God sometimes allows it. And so if you are not sure whether it is God or Satan that is doing it, if you are not sure, what did he say? That's why he now go to verse 5. He said, if anyone lack wisdom, wisdom is that I don't understand what is going on in this matter, in this situation. Ask God. Lord, are you the one behind this or not? He will tell you. That is why, you see, when you study God and understand the ways of God, there are laws of the spirit. The Bible says in the Roman chapter 8, verse, he said the law of the spirit of life there are laws. The law of the spirit of life have set me free from the law of sin and death. There are spiritual laws. You can't break it, you can't change it. Just like you have natural laws. You can't break the law of gravity. You can't break the natural law. If you sow evil, you will reap evil. Whatever you sow, you reap. James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12, 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, I'm greeting you. Verse 2, my brethren, my brethren means that they are born again, is it not? Few with the Holy Ghost, they speak in tongues, they go to church, they receive communion, amen. I say, my brethren, count it all what? Joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3. Knowing this, you need to know. Don't be ignorant. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God wants to develop patience in your life. He wants to develop it. He wants to build. Because he's the one that is at work in you. Both to do what? To will and to do his good pleasure. Give me Hebrew chapter 13 verse 20 and 21. Then you come back to this. You come back to James. So Hebrews 13, 20, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, verse 21. Make you what? Perfect in every good work to do his will, walking in you. Who is walking in you? God walks in you. That which is what? Well pleasing in his sight. God wants to see you meek. He wants to see you a humble person. He wants to see you. A man of patience, men who through faith and patience obtain the promise. You want to work out patience in your life. You want to work out peace in your life. You want to work out all this. He's growing you. He's building you. He's developing you by the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. God does it. So when he starts doing this in your life, go back to James chapter 1 verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. Okay, verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. Allow patience to develop to its fullness. It will come to a point when you know that you know that you know. The patience in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of chaos, you are quiet, you are at peace, wanting nothing. You are calm. When everybody is running up and down on the other. The, that's what the Bible calls it. The peace that passes all understanding. You, can't, you don't know it. It's something about it. Be careful for nothing. But in everything we pray and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding. Will keep your soul and body together in Christ. You are not bothered. You are not worried. You are not stressed up. 
money or no money, business moving or not moving and all of that. God, even when that business is not moving, God is working out something. There is something that God, he wants to know whether your faith and your trust and everything is as a result of what I am doing in your life through that business that is making you call upon me. And Just like he said to Job, have you seen a man like me, like my son Job, my servant? He's perfect and he fears God and all. You know what the devil opens his mouth and said? I hear you. Here we come again. He know you. He believe Job because you have, you've given him money, give him and he's secured. Touch any of those things and see whether he will not curse you right in your face. Is it what the devil is saying to God about Job? That your business and you don't, one thing that I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how long, because it's called a long suffering. I don't know how long it is going to be. It might be one week, it might be one month, it might be one year, it might be ten years. But how long it is, the longer the time, means that what he's doing in you, is going to be used to affect generations upon generations upon generations to come. So you need to grow deep in down. He need to drill you and drill you and drill you until you get deep down. By the time he's done, he will bring you out. You are ready. See somebody like John Zechariah, Elizabeth and Zechariah. Elizabeth was barren. For all true, had only one child, had only one, and then when that child, and the, the Bible says Zechariah and Elizabeth, he was serving God faithfully. He was barren, but he was serving God for all those years. Finally, she took him. She gave birth to that one son, John. Look at what the life of John turned out. Became a prophet that heralded the coming of Jesus Christ. A ministry that is very rare. Only one man, God found what in the whole of creation to do that job. Look at Abraham. One, 25 years he waited. And when Isaac finally showed up, today we hear about the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Look at what he did with Jacob. How many years? 21 years, seven years into three. The longer the drill, the bigger the glory and the assignment. Okay, so he said now, he will say, he said, if any of you lack wisdom of what? What is lack of wisdom? You don't know, you don't understand what is going on in my life. Or I don't understand anymore. I have done everything that I need to do. Nothing seems to be working and all of that. You fasted. You prayed. Nothing, nothing. Ask him. God is the one actually. And then you look into your life. Is there any known sin? That I have committed or that I am doing. You check your heart. The Bible says examine your heart. You have examined your heart. And you let God you say, Lord, help me examine my heart. And after that, there is nothing. Because if there is something in your heart and you are walking with God, your heart will reveal it. Your heart will condemn you. Your heart will, God does not accuse you. Holy Spirit does not accuse you. Neither does he condemn. He says if your heart condemns you. When you sin, the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you. I hope you know that. When you commit sin, the Holy Spirit does not condemn you. God does not condemn you. Jesus does not condemn you. The one that condemns you is your spirit, man. So he said, that's why he said, if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. So you now check your heart. There is nothing wrong in your heart that you are doing. You can be sure that it's God that is working. So, Calm down. Stop binding him. Stop binding God. So that he will be fast to finish his work. And that is why he said, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. And God will let you know. 
I am the one behind it. And if you know that God is the one behind it, you go to sleep. You allow him to do his work. Don't intervene. Interfere with his work. Allow him to do it. How effective your prayer life will be depends on how much of the word of God that is inside you. John chapter 15 verse 5. John 15 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do. If you abide in me and my word does what? Abide in you. Then you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. In other words, how effective your prayer life is. Because if you say your prayer is effective, it means that you pray, you get result. You pray, you get answer. A lot of people, they are discouraged, they don't pray. Because even when they pray, they don't even believe their prayer. They just pray for the sake of praying. And that is why we drag our feet. We drag everything about prayer because it is boring. Prayer is boring. And why it's boring is because you are not getting results. And why you are not getting results is because you are praying amiss. You are praying wrongly. The way I was taught. They said prayer is something that when you finish saying you get results. <laughs> you know what a lot of people do? A lot of us we pray the problem. Instead of praying the promises of God. We pray the problem. If you listen to our prayer, that is what we do. We pray the problem. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. 2 Peter chapter 1. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. According as his divine power had given unto us, what? All things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through knowledge. Knowledge of his word. You must know what God said. Okay, so he said, According as his divine power had given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and what? Precious promises. What is given to you? Exceeding great and precious. Those promises are yea and amen. God has given you a promise. For example, do you know what is a promise? What is a promise? Give me an example of a promise. You shall be, now your promise is not complete. Oh. If you serve me, I will bless your bread and bless your water and take away this disease. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these shall be added unto you. Uh -huh, now you are talking. Hmm? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his wings. So if you are going to abide under the shadow of God, that's God's protection, divine protection and presence. What does he say? You have to abide. If you don't abide, it will not happen. So he has given us promises like that. But see where, where we are failing big time. Because most of us, the pastors will tell you you shall be the head and not the tail. Can somebody say amen? amen. I say you shall be the head and not the tail. Can somebody say amen? amen? You are not saying it again. You don't want to be the head. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what he says? Is that what he says? Is half truth. You go go somewhere, cut off the other one. He say, if you are careful to observe and to do all my commandments, you shall be the head and not the tail. But you know what we do? We remove that one and say you shall be the head. We don't want to take responsibilities. 
He has given every promise has a condition to it. Every promise of God, it has a condition to it. There is one that is given. For example, every work of grace is given. For example, you are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. There is no works. It's finished. You confess that one, you claim it, it becomes yours. And all those giving are in the past. They are the things that Jesus Christ had accomplished. For you to enter into the experience so that it becomes, so that you start enjoying all those things. There are things you need to do. Faith without works is dead. So when you want to pray, you are going to pray in line with the word of God. Because Jeremiah chapter 112, you know what he says? He said to Jeremiah, what did you see? Jeremiah said, I have seen an almond tree. He said, you have seen well. Because I'm watching over my word. To bring them to come to pass. When you hold God on his word, God will never fail. He will never falter. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will do everything within my I will do everything to bring my word to come to pass. You cannot hold God on his promises. Because the Bible said the promises of God are yea and amen. In other words, they can never be broken. My covenant will I not break. Nor alter the things that have gone out of my mouth. Have you not read it in the book of Psalm 89 verse 34? My covenant I will not break nor change the things that have gone up. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. For by two immutable things, for which it is impossible for God to lie. Give it to me. Hebrew chapter 6, verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, Confirm it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have what? A strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us so that you can bet your life on it. If God has uttered it, your life, you can bet your life on it. That is what prayer is. Prayer is God, you made a promise to me in this regard. I, you put your life, even if, if, if it means heaven and earth to come down and kiss themselves for that prayer to be answered, it will. The problem is that, do you hold God on his word? Is that God's promise? He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. And not one jot on this law will fall to the ground until they are fulfilled. God will never break his word. Never. I'm going to take you to another dimension. But I want you to consolidate on this and understand this. I'm taking them step by step. So you don't pray the problem. You pray the promise. Because he's watching over his word to bring it to come to pass. 
So when you have a need, when there is a challenge in your life, when there is a problem in your life, when there is something that you want to pray about, don't just rush and begin to pray, oh God, we thank you today, we come in your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you said that this will happen, the other one will happen, and all of that. No, you know what do you do? You have a problem. Go first. Go first. Search the scriptures. Find out. Go through those things again. Read after it. If it is about finances and all of that, go to it. Read after it. Read about the promises he made in that regard. Read it by yourself. Stay on it. Think about it. Meditate on it before you pray. Don't just jump into it. You want to pray. If it's about healing, you read in the Bible, Second Peter 2 24, it's about his stripes. Go back to that scripture. Open Isaiah 53. Read from verse 1 and all of that. Read through. Meditate on it. Read Galatians 3.13. I have been redeemed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. And all of that. When you read it and you read it and you read it, you meditate on it, you close your eyes and all of that. Then... 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, you are ready to pray. When you pray a prayer based on those things, believe you me. Believe you me. If today is going to be, if it means that today being Friday is going to become Sunday, for that prayer to be answered, it will become Sunday. That is the impossible becomes possible. That's how it is done. I call it making business of prayer. It's not just anything you just hear. You just jump into it and begin to. No, take time. It's even in the process of studying and all of that, you hear God speak. This thing that you are trying to come to me and talk to me, I'm the one that engineered it, so calm down. And when you hear that one, what do you do? You answer up and begin to thank him. I know I thank you because you are the one that is at work in me, both to will and to do your good pleasure. Lord, I surrender, have your way. Whatever you decide, all I am is dying and dying I am, Lord. Here am I. Let your will be done in my life. You will cruise. The ability, the grace to help you go through that issue, that problem, you will make it available. So when you go through the water, you won't be drowned. You go through that fire, raging fire. You come out purer and stronger. That's how it happens. So when you have a need, what do you do? Give me an example of your need. You now bring your Bible. If you don't know where it is in the Bible and all of that, just go to the concordance. That's why you need to have a study Bible. That's why you say study to show yourself. It didn't say read. Study. You study the Bible. You don't just read. Because we are looking for something that God will give you. You know the blessings of God make it rich and add no sorrow. It stays. It lasts. So you, I put my Bible about a job. It's not good for man to be idle. You need to walk in order that you may have and then give to others. That's what he said in the book of Ephesians. I open it. I read it. Okay, so Lord, you said it is not good for me to be idle. That I should walk so that I can have to give to others. See what he says. So the reason for my walking is so that I can be an extension of your grace to others. You see how you pray it. So God, you have to read this, understand it, and make up your mind, Lord, I'm going to do this is what I will do. Because that's why he said, give us this day. He didn't say, give me this day. Give us this day, our daily bread. Give us. You are praying. He didn't say, give me. He said, when you pray, say, give us. That is including you and me. If you need 10,000 naira, a need of 10,000, ask God to give you 20,000. Hmm? 
so that you can give the 10,000 to others. Give us our daily bread. When you have understanding of this, your prayer will change. You become, you will no longer become selfish. You will stop selling fish in the market. Give us. Give it to me. Ephesians chapter 4. Let him that stole steal what? No more. But rather let him labor, walking with his own hands, the things which is good, that he may do what? Have. To give to him that do what needed. This is God's word. He said, do not be a busy body, idle, doing nothing. That's the other one I'm looking for. Second Thessalonians 3.10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if anyone not walk, neither should he eat. Lord, I don't want to be, I don't want to die of hunger. He said, I should walk. And I have nothing to do on my own. Help me. Give me work to do. Lead me by your spirit. So that I can have. So I can give to others. Create a door. Lead me. Guide and direct me. When you pray that way, he makes a way for you. He leads you. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down on green pasture. He leads me beside still. He's the one that makes you lie down on green pasture. Green pasture is where you have food to eat. You are not hungry. You are not idle. You are not lacking. So you see, that is why I say when you want to pray, you gather this scripture, you meditate, you read it, you study, take out time. Sometimes is a need today. You, you make up your mind, I'm going to pray about it tomorrow. So, but let me look at the word of God, what God says. This is how you build your confidence in Christ. So whenever you want to pray, you present God's word to him. That is why if you're going to have an effective, you see, huh? I don't know if I'm going to do that. Corporate prayer is different from personal prayers. They are two different things entirely. And you have to be very skillful if you are going to do corporate prayer. If not, you just be blowing hot air in the air. At the end of the day, nothing is achieved. Nothing is done. Because you are going to carry everybody along with you. And if people are going to pray, they have to know what they are praying about. You don't just come and be praying. If people don't know what they are praying about, then you are wasting your time. Anyway. Uh... There is one other thing that I want to point out. I know we're going to read the Bible, pray according to God's word. Forgive me 1 John 5, 14. That is another shift. It's where the boys are separated from the men. Give me 1 John 5, 14. And this is my confidence. If you want to have confidence, bold assurance... You can get out of that prayer closet, beating your chest. You know that you know that you know. Come rain, come shine. No matter what, I am one. It's just like um, somebody giving you, um, what is this thing they used to go to the bank again? I've forgotten. Check. It's been long, for, I don't, maybe for about two, three years or four years now. I've not... Because he's transfer. He's check. It's as good as somebody giving you a check. You can go to the bank and cash it. If you pray in line with the will of God, you can go home and sleep. The problem is, what you are asking, is it in line with his will? Because a lot of people pray that he has made a promise in the Bible does not automatically mean is for you. I will give it to you. I'll give you an example. I want to buy a car. Does he want you to have a car? I want to get married. Does he want you to get married? I want to marry Gideon. Do you want me to marry Gideon? Yeah, he said we should marry. 
be fruitful, multiply. For you to be fruitful and all of you have to have a legally married wife under God. This person that I want to marry, does God want me to marry this person? There is a bandwagon. Everybody is moving to Canada and had green passports and jive to Canada because that is a green. Does he want you to go there? You remember Lot. How many of you remember Lot and Abraham? Does God, you see where he led his family, destroyed his family, everyone gone. His wife, his children became, they committed incest, all kinds of, what is the will of God? Jesus said, as it is written in the volume of the books, here I come to do thy will, O God. In Gethsemane, can this cup pass over me? This is what I would prefer. However, it is not my will. Let your will be done. This is people who bring joy to God. These are the kind of people who make God happy. This is the kind of people who are actually responding to the workings and the dealings of the Holy Spirit. Who are not frustrating the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Because he's working in you to perfect you. To bring you to a place where you line up with the will of God for your life. I told you several times how that I was praying all kinds of prayer. At a point, you know what my prayer, I was praying the problem. As a pastor, I was praying the problem. I said, Lord, one day in the night, I woke up, I said, Lord, today, tonight, what I want, I knelt down, pulled my hands together like this, I closed my hand, I said, Lord, I want to talk to you today. I know you called me to be a man, a pastor and do the work of the ministry, but there are so many distractions. One of which is a house. If you give me a house, I will no longer be distracted so that I can do the work that you sent me to do. I was on my knees praying this prayer. I was praying the problems. When I finished praying it, six months, nothing happened. Then, one night again, it, because it disturbed and bothered me. So, one early night, early in the morning, around 3 a.m., I got up to pray. I began to pray in the spirit and all of that. When I finished praying in the spirit and all of that, praising God and thanking God, I went to sleep. What I had is, is, is like black and white. It's undeniable. It flowed from my spirit, man. I heard it in my spirit, not with my ears. I heard it in my spirit. Seek is just that picture, that scripture, and everything. He come. I don't know how God does it. The thing came up. He said, "Seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." And you know when God is speaking to you, hmm? when He gives you such whatever, when you when you get it, you will know. Why he's saying it. You just have that understanding. He will give you the understanding. It's not a question of you pray and you, you get a message, you are confused, you don't know what it is. He does it with unbelievers, not with his children. So when I woke up, I knew this is what it is. Because that is what I've been praying and crying my head and all of that. And he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this will be added unto you. When I woke up in the morning around 7 o'clock and all on, because it was, I prayed till around 6 or there about, I now slept off. And then when I got that thing around 7, I woke up. I called my wife. I said, come, 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 come. Thank God for marrying a woman that fears. So I called and said, this is what the Lord God Almighty has said. I heard it in my spirit, man. He said, we should concentrate on this assignment. Leave the rest for him. He said, okay. The following day, that morning we fired. Continue with all momentum and all of that. Then, you remember home video. Two weeks later, 
the rest was history. The will of God. When you find his will, you go to sleep. But when you have not found his will, you are quoting script. You know, people, there are people who know how to quote scriptures. According to the Matthew chapter 7 verse 19, the Bible says, this is, this is, according to Luke chapter 17 verse 38, he says this one, the other one, in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, praise that. Shaking together. And running over. And as you are doing that, you are conjuring scriptures and all on that. God just speaks one word. Just one word he will give you. Pray in line with the will of God. Now the question is, how then do I get the will of God? Is it no? Give me Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the same way, the spirit, spirit capital, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, okay? Because he's in capital, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, likewise, the spirit also help our infirmities. What is infirmity? What is a weakness? He explained what it is there. He said, likewise, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit also help our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You think you know, you don't. I don't know what to pray about, what I should be praying about. And he said, for we know not what we should pray for. What do you want to pray? Let us gather and pray. What do you want to pray? There's something God wants you to pray. Remember as many as are led by the Spirit. You need to be led. These are the sons of God. These are the ones that are mature. They are no longer children. It's not just being led by the word of God and all that, but specific. How does the Holy Spirit help your inability? How does it actually? Because in this case, he said, Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that helps you to pray as you ought to. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. It's the Holy Spirit that takes over the prayer and then you begin to pray. Should I travel to the east or should I not travel? My brother called me the day before yesterday. He said, because of issues in the... He said, you have to come this August and all of that. I should come and all of... In fact, no, even if it is one day, I should come and that is man for you. Does he want me to travel? I said, okay, I have heard you. If I have a leading, I will go. If I don't have a leading, I'm not stepping one inch. Anything you like, do. If you like, it hates me. If you like, be angry with me. When you finish, you are where you are. For my sake, I'm not going to go. I would rather obey God than to obey my brothers. Period. And I have no excuse. I have no apologies to you and all that. When you want to live a gulf, you will suffer persecution. Because when God says, sit down and they want you to come. And you sit down, you didn't go. They will fall out with you. Is it not? That is why praying in the spirit is not an option. It is a gift God has given to every man. Every. If you don't pray in the spirit, you are grossly limited. There are extent you can, you just get to a particular point and that is where you remain. You can't go beyond that. There are depths you cannot assess. There are places you cannot go. You just stay on this whatever. Because when you pray in English, you pray, by the time you, you pray in English for one minute, you have exhausted all the vocabularies that you have learned in your life. And you know the Bible says, avoid vain repetitions. Tautology. You keep repeating yourself over and over. Remember you are talking to an, an intelligent just imagine you just imagine John, Barrister John in the whatever, in the law court and there is a judge sitting down there and he's re- listening to your presentation to your prayer and all of that and you are repeating yourself and, um, uh, my, my 
my lordship. You know, today, they, we, today, I just want you to have mercy and pardon this person because he did this thing in ignorance. You know, Lord, just have mercy. You understand what I'm saying? Just have mercy because, you know, they, you know he's out of ignorance. Even though we know that um, uh, ignorance is not um, an excuse, you know, to break the law. But no, Lord, you just have to forgive him and all of that because if you don't forgive him, you know, there is nobody to help him and all of that. So, Lord, you know, you just have to forgive him. I'm just asking you for mercy. You keep repeating yourself over and over. You are not making something intelligent. You are not communicating intelligently. You speak your grammar, all the English and grammar you learn. Just to give you one minute, you finish. One minute is too much. There is a language. As you pray in the spirit, as you pray in the spirit, as you pray in the spirit, Remember, you do not know what to pray for. The way you're supposed to pray it. Okay? That's the meaning of that. And he that searched the heart, the Holy Spirit that searched the heart, he knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. That is, he's talking about God, that one, the God is the one that searches the heart of man. So he knows what is in the mind that the spirit is communicating. The spirit knows because he said, I will give you a new spirit. I will put my spirit inside of you. My spirit knows what is in your spirit. He pulls it and then he begins to communicate that to God. And the Bible said that God that knows what is in the mind of the spirit does what? What is in the mind of the spirit? Because he maketh intercession for saints according to the will of God. God, that is what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's praying in line with the will of God. And this is my confidence that whatsoever I ask in accordance to his will, you can be sure he heard you. Not everything that you pray that is heard. If you are praying off point, it's not heard. That's what it means. So, if I pray in this way, he heard me. He, he said, make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How now do I know when the Holy Spirit is one now helping me to pray? How does it relate to me knowing the will of God? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 4. 3, 4. Or let's read 2, 3, 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesied edifieth the church. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what? Who is he speaking to? Who is he talking to? God, not man. But unto God, for no man understandeth him. How be it, however, in the spirit he does what? What is mystery? The things you, don't, you do not know. You are telling it to God by the Holy Spirit. Okay? You are communicating those mysteries to God, unknown to you. You are praying it. Now I want you to watch. Because sometimes when we pray in the spirit, we get carried away. We don't understand. You don't, we don't make business of prayer. There are a whole lot of information and all of that that are available. But we don't make use of because of ignorance. And this thing will be coming and be, 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 eluding you and you don't know. At the end of the day, you are back to square one. Verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, what happens? But my understanding is one. Okay, verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with understanding also. What is he saying here? I want to ask you a question. If it is true, tell me. If it's not true, put down your hand. Have you ever prayed in the spirit and you pray in the spirit and you also pray in your understanding have you done that many times hmm? have you now watch 
when you now pray in your understanding, that is you pray in the spirit and then you pray in your understanding. Okay? That understanding that you are praying, did you think about it or plan it before praying it? What do you think is happening? It is those mysteries that you have communicated to God. That is understanding that is being given to you on understanding. You are praying it in your understanding so that it can now become useful to you. So a wise man will know when you pray in that your spirit, you pray in the spirit, you pray in the spirit, and you pray in the spirit for a while, you are not planning it. You are not planning that you are going to pray in your understanding alone. Somewhere along the line, you find yourself praying in the understanding. It is a decoding of what you are talking to God in the spirit, the mysteries that is being downloaded in your spirit man. You pray it in an understanding. A wise man puts it down. You are praying in line with the will of God. That's how you know. Because sometimes we see, we, we pray when, when you pray a prayer like that and you get to that point and this thing happens you lay hold on that, you can go home and sleep. Watch write those things down, follow it up. Now when you want to pray your understanding, you can now pick up that whatever you pray that time. Pray it again because that is the will of God. Stay on it and follow it. This is the advantage, one of the many advantages that those that pray in the Spirit, that baptize in the Holy Ghost, have over those who are not. Because I don't know what to pray as I ought to. But the Holy Spirit helps my inability so that I can pray in line with the will of the Father. He said, He that searches the mind of the spirit knows what is in his mind because he's praying in line with the will of God and how do I pray I pray in the spirit it's not just shouting it's not just raising your mouth and all of that no as you are praying, that thing is downloading. You are downloading what it is. So when you see people who are making business of prayer, they have a paper and all of that. When that understanding comes, he goes and put it down. And sometimes, hello, another way it happens is that you are praying in the spirit and all of that. And all of a sudden, something flashes in your mind. You just remember something just came into your... Has it happened to you? You take a paper and put it down. Is showing you visions. You shall see visions. It's clips. Vision is not only when you sit down uh -huh, and then they will start. You now have vision of the night. You now stay for about five minutes or whatever. No, it can happen in a split of a second. These things are they are is not is not rocket science. It's the children's bread. Is your is your is your right is your privilege is is I don't know how to say it. it's yours. That's why Paul said, "I pray in the spirit. I pray in tongues more than you all." That's why he had all kinds of immense revelations and all of that. The more you pray in the spirit, the more you contact the realm, that realm. A whole lot of things will be decoding, will be downloading for you. You are going to begin to have word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and all of that. That is why when you pray in the spirit, you are in line with it. Because if you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says, There is time and season for everything under the heaven a time to sleep, a time to wake up, a time to eat, a time to refrain from eating. A time to smile and a time to cry. A time to plant and a time to refrain from planting. A time to harvest. When do you know? How do you know what time to do this and do that? It's so complicated. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. He leads you. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul said, I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace. The Holy Spirit. Because God is a spirit. I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace. That is able to build you. So you see the process. The, the journey we have taken. Undertaken so far. We started by discussing about. 
understanding prayer and studying the word of God and all of that. How do you study the word of God? Another way you know the will of God, the mind of God, okay, is that when you have a need in your life, when you have a need or you have a question or something that is confusing you, you don't have an answer to it, you don't understand. Now, you are not, when you are reading the scripture, you are not searching the scripture in order to find, you are just reading the Bible on your own, studying on your own. And then, all of a sudden, you read something that, about what you were thinking or question you were asking before. There is a connection. Something just happened to you in your spirit and all of that. God is showing you, say, this is it. The answer to it. And sometimes you are asking a question and you don't have an understanding. In the course of studying the Bible and all of that, you come across the answer to that, your question. God is speaking to you. Or maybe there is a, a, an issue, you have a misunderstanding with somebody or with um, uh, um, for example, I have a misunderstanding with Uzo and all of that. And then I am studying my Bible and in the course of studying my Bible, the Bible says, submit yourself to one another. I come across it. All of a sudden, I just remember that there was an argument between me and Uzo and we are refusing to whatever. So what he's telling me is that I should submit to him. Listen to what he is saying and not to shun him down. God is speaking to you through his word. Another way he speaks is that some of those questions and all of that, as you come to church, it could be from the pulpit because the Bible says he let him that speaks, speak as an oracle of God. You, you speak as a mouthpiece. There is a mystery. See, yeah? see, see, even if you don't understand anything in this, your life, even if you don't know God at all, even if you are illiterate about anything that is spiritual and all of that, there is one thing that you must not play with. You see this place, they call pulpit. You see this place? Whenever is an office, whenever any man steps in here and begins to speak, that person is God that he has taken over. He said, when you stand to speak, it is not you that is doing the speaking. He said, at that moment, the Holy Spirit will bring, it is God that is speaking. But he's using human vessel to communicate because you can't just, in absence of, assuming you come here now and then you are hearing a voice and somebody is speaking and you don't see the person that is speaking and it's not that they are the speakers and all of that you are just hearing voice with a microphone and you know you will, not, you will stay here but God has to use a human being a human vessel to communicate the truth that's what it is it's not you that's part of the prayer you pray not mine not somebody's wisdom Paul said I do not come with enticing words of man's wisdom I come with the demonstration of the power and the spirit of God it's God and sometimes somebody is standing here speaking and all of that. And somebody say, hey, Pastor is using me to preach. You know, you know what is your problem? Because you think you are too much. You think you are too much. That everything must be around you, must be about you. So what is the essence of the pulpit? Many a time people have come to tell me and say, Pastor, it's like you were in my house this today. Everything that happened in my house, everything that is what you are saying here, I don't know how this thing happened. Is God speaking, addressing situations and circumstances in the life of you? That is why the best place to be at any point in time T, is in the presence of God, is in the house of God. Because when you come, that's where the Bible says, when you come into the house of God, don't be hasty in uttering so many words. He said, don't be walking about. He said, calm down. God is about to speak to address situations and circumstances and lives of men and destinies of men. He come to alter them. He's through the word. That's why Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up. That's what happens here. But a lot of people don't know. So we come, we think we are dealing with man or we are dealing with church, we are dealing with this or dealing with that. It doesn't matter. When I learned, I used to be very stubborn. When somebody wants to talk, I will size the person inside. By that time, I didn't even know nothing. 
You can see the level of stupid and useless pride that was in my stupid head in those stupid days. When I learned my lesson, the hard way, it doesn't matter who the person that is standing here. The moment you climb or stand speaking, I listen. I learn. God uses, if he can use an animal horse called a, is it not a horse? To speak a donkey. What about a human being? Even uses object and situation and circumstances to speak to us. So, in the studying the word of God and prayer, they go hand in hand. If you don't study the word of God, you cannot pray effectively. I don't care how many hours you spend praying. You can pray for 10 hours for all I care. You can see me pray. When you pray, you don't have this understanding. Because when God is showing, and anything God is showing you, and when you are praying in your understanding, and then you have clips of uh, visions here and there, and all of that in the course of a prayer. Whatever it is, you have to go back again and make sure it is found in the Bible. That's how one man was praying. He finished praying and he came to church. He said to one lady, he said, God just spoke to me in the place of communion. The place of communion. That's going to be my wife. Meanwhile, the woman is married with children. And the woman being a very wise woman, <laughs> you say, brother, I thank God for your life. Oh, thank God for everything. God bless you and all of that. Now, it's just that I have a little problem. He said, what is the problem? He said, I don't know what to do with my husband and my children now. Now that God has spoken to you. See how people are this way. In a place of communion with God, God told you that somebody's wife is going to be your wife. Or a young lady, you know all these prophets, he said, eh, God spoke to you. You know, there are churches where they have prophetess. They are agents of darkness and Satan that are sent to destroy what God is doing in the church and in the lives of the people. He said, God told me that this woman is a witch. Your wife is a witch, you should. God told you. It's not in the church that I pass up because even the church, if I have such a thing, I'll go and hire people like um, Chinedu that has big chest. When he starts, I will tell them they will carry you up in the sky. They bring you out to the main road. You will never find yourself back into this place that God told you. So you see, if you're praying, you pray in line with when the Holy Spirit is speaking, He will speak the word. He will show you, he will lead you. You see the one that he showed me is the scripture, Matthew, and it's clear. You follow it. And you get the job done.